Hey everyone, I am Cassie Preview, and you are not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show, where we are going to talk to Intel about the OpenVINO toolkit inside Onyx Runtime. Let's take a look. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, why don't you guys tell me a little bit about yourself? Hey, Cassie. Uh, my name is Devong. I'm currently a technical product manager at Intel, part of the OpenVINO team, uh, and I'm currently managing the product OpenVINO execution provider for Onyx Runtime. Awesome. Hi, Casey. I'm Akila. I'm working as a de deep learning engineer at Intel, and I'm working on various framework integrations, and one of them is Onyx Runtime. And I'm currently working on workflows, which is like ML ops. Uh, awesome. I just did a talk on ML ops. I think it's, it's such a cool topic and there's so much exciting things happening in that space. But today we're going to be talking about execution providers. And if you don't know what those are, um, they are part of Onyx Runtime, which allows you to accelerate your models on different hardware. So it allows you to optimize and take advantage of those different uh, capabilities and different compute platforms. Um, this is important for application developers because it allows them to deploy their models on different hardware, whether it's cloud and edge, and still get the performance that they need. So examples of those would be like CUDA DirectML or OpenVINO, like we're going to be talking about today. So let's jump in. How can developers creating Onyx models accelerate inference with Intel hardware? Can you introduce us to the OpenVINO execution provider? Sure, absolutely, Cassie. So um, in a nutshell, OpenVINO Toolkit does all the magic aimed at boosting the performance of your deep learning models uh, using some of the most advanced optimization techniques, specifically optimized for Intel hardware. So now developers can actually leverage the power of OpenVINO Toolkit through Onyx Runtime to accelerate inferencing of Onyx models. So how exactly does OpenVINO Execution Provider actually work? So users continue to actually import the Onyx Runtime library after installing our package from PyPy, uh, the, it's basically pip install onyx runtime dash openvino. But now with a simple modification to the inference session line of code, where they have to just set the provider's openvino execution provider, they can utilize the power of openvino while using the onyx runtime APIs. All it takes is really that simple modification to the line of code. A little bit of history behind this is that back in 2019, Intel and Microsoft actually joined hands to create this product which delivers this better inferencing performance on the same hardware compared to generic acceler acceleration on Intel compute devices. That's uh, super awesome. So I love to see how things work. Can you share a demo that shows us how this flow actually works with the execution provider of the OpenVINO one and how that kind of works with Intel hardware? Sure, absolutely. Um, absolutely. So. Uh, today, I'll be showing a demo um, that showcases a popular deep learning model right now called YOLO v7. Uh, so uh, this, this demo, basically the sample involves presenting an image to Onyx Runtime, uh, which then uses the OpenVINO execution provider to run inferencing on, the, on an Intel CPU. Um, and, you, and you'll be able to see the accelerated performance for yourself. So uh, walking through this demo right now, first of all, we start off with just downloading the uh, code Coco validation data set. This, that's the Coco data set. It's a very popular data set that, we, that um, the YOLO model is, is trained on. Um, but, um, we have the export uh, um, capability where we take the uh, PyTorch model because YOLO v7 was actually trained in PyTorch. Uh, that PyTorch model we converted to Onyx format, right? So for sake of time, I'm, I, 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 will, I will not be running this sale, uh, cells, but, um, but we've already run this in, in the past. But, uh, we, we have converted the, uh, the PyTorch model to Onyx, and we provide an input image. We, we download this, this, this input image. The image that we are downloading right now is an image of a cat. So uh, that will be the image which we'll be inferring on. Um, afterwards, uh, we uh, do uh, the pip install Onyx runtime openvino which I just mentioned, right? which we are trying to get access to the OpenVINO provider. So we, we install the, uh, this package. Um, after this, we can we import all the required libraries. As you can see over here, it's just we continue to just import Onyx Runtime itself. Uh, so once we uh, dip install Onyx Runtime dash open, we know uh, there's no real specific different package that we have to import. It's still the package that the library that we have to import. So uh, we do all the imports for the required libraries. The next part for us is actually doing the pre-processing of the image. So this, this is basically allowing the resize this image 
to a shape which is expected by the model, right? Uh, so that's essentially doing the, all the reshaping and all that stuff so that we can do it. This is actually right now a helper function. So um, we're going to be using this helper function later on uh, in this demo to we'll, we'll make we're making the call to do the pre-processing. Um, afterwards, what we do is uh, we have various different labels. Um, so we're actually assigning like color values to those labels, right? So um, based on the label, I mean the the detection that we're doing um, based on that, uh, that will be the image of that box of the detection. So that's essentially the the color for the labels, mapping those. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then uh, we um, have functions to do the reading and pre-processing of the image. So this is where we um, actually uh, read the image in, um, and then uh, we actually perform the pre-processing on that image itself. Um, next is when we is is when we actually um, look at how we can set the or create this um, um, inference session to Onyx runtime, right? So this function, another helper function, where uh, we have two parameters. One is the model path, which is like pointing to, which will be will be pointing to our Onyx model. And then over here, the second function parameter is a device argument, uh, which we can uh, pass in. Uh, so if we pass in CPU underscore FP32, which is it'll, it's in all the caps, um, it will run the inferencing with Open Vino Execution Provider on um, on the CPU. But if it's all lowercase CPU, then it'll it'll run uh, it with uh, the native Onyx runtime or MLAS CPU execution provider uh, uh, for this model. Um, and if, if no arguments are passed in or no, no thing it'll, it'll pa uh, pass in, then we'll just use the default uh, CPU execution provider uh, for inferencing. So after we have all these helper functions all set, uh, we, we go to the last function, which is called the run inference function. And this essentially is kind of putting all the pieces together which does all the tasks such as pre-processes in the input image, it, it uh, creates the appropriate Onyx runtime session as per our device argument. It runs the inference along with NMS um, on the predictions that for the number of runs passed, um, and it adds the bounding boxes on the detected objects and saves a copy of the inferred image, right? So it's essentially calling all their helper functions in this function so that we can kind of paint that whole story together uh, in this. Um, so once this function is all complete and we have uh, everything all set, um, then we can actually begin our inferencing, right? So over here, we are passing in, uh, like I mentioned before, the Onyx model is our is, is what we're pointing to, and the input image, which is the image of a cat. And for right now, we're running the iterations, the number of iterations, about 100 iterations. Um, and um, we can set the params accordingly and actually the run inference function to, to uh, uh, do the actual inference. Um, and as you can see over here, after we do the inferencing, uh, the uh, the uh, cat is detected over here. Um, so you can see the cat label and um, the accuracy is, is given over here at 0 0.99. And the average inference time with on with CPU execution provider on this uh, uh, on this Intel CPU is about 67 milliseconds. Um, and then uh, we can start running inferencing using Open Vino execution provider on the same Intel CPU. And we can see that the accuracy is the same, 0.929, uh, and we're detecting the cat. But we can see that the average time, inference time in milliseconds, the latency has been decreased to 32 milliseconds, which is almost like a 2x performance boost. Uh, so yeah, um, yeah. So in a nutshell, this is kind of like the flow that it takes to run with Open Windows Execution Provider. And you can see just like, um, it's really simple to use um, and, and really uh, it's really easy to use and you can just get that X performance boost uh, for some of these popular deep learning models. Yeah, and like a lot of the code that you showed is things you'd be writing anyways, like the adjustments that you had to make in order to actually use the um, execution provider for that hardware to get that performance increase was not really that much. Like that was a very small piece of the overall demo. Exactly, that. exactly, right? So it's it's super easy, like like I say, right? It's just a simple modification of, mm -hmm. of that line of code. All you have to do is just that pip installation of Onyx Run 10 OpenVINO continue to import that Onyx Runtime library, and then just set the provider's open window execution provider if you're using an Intel hardware, and that accelerated performance is waiting for you. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure people would love to see some insights into the architecture of how this works. Would you show Absolutely. That? Absolutely. Okay. So sure, uh, I, I can give like a quick overview of the architecture. So how, how it works is that the Onyx model, which is coming into the Onyx Runtime application, gets converted into an in-memory graph representation and goes into uh, what we call a graph practitioner or, or a get caught capability module. 
So this module actually queries all the backends that are available and it asks which part of the graph it can support. So the providers that we have enabled have to reply and say that these are the subgraphs that we support and we should provide handles back to Onyx Runtime. When it's time for the subgraphs to be executed, Onyx Runtime will then send that back to the execution provider and it will do the inference and send the output back. So in, in a nutshell, that's how, kind of how it works under the hood. Cool, that's super helpful to kind of understand how we're able to get that optimization, keep the accuracy and not really have to do that much extra work. I mean, yeah. that, that's so cool. Um, so talking about getting better performance, um, obviously large models and, and transformer models are very popular right now. Um, I think most people have heard of Hugging Face at this point. Um, and if you haven't, you should go look it up because they have um, amazing APIs and they're just doing really cool stuff in the space. Um, can you show us how we could use this to um, further optimize a hugging face model using quantization? Yes, absolutely. We have some amazing tools from Intel just for optimization. One of them is Neural Network Compression Framework. It provides a uh, suite of advanced methods for training time model optimization techniques within the DL framework, such as PyTorch and TensorFlow. It supports methods like quantization array training, accuracy array training, and uh, fine tuning and filter pruning. Among these methods, quantization array training is pretty popular, and we would want to show uh, talk about this more uh, going forward. Yeah, not a lot of a code. Uh, with just few lines of code, we can leverage uh, quantization techniques during training. Uh, let me explain in detail. So I'm sure many of them might have heard about Hugging Face Transformers library. Optimum is a library that provides uh, optimization techniques to Hugging Face Transformers training pipeline. Uh, we have NNCF and OpenNINO added uh, to the Optimum library, which is called as o Optimum Intel. Um, if the user has access to Hugging Face training pipeline with just few lines of code, uh, they can enable quantization every training technique. So here is a, a code snippet. Uh, so if you have an existing uh, training pipeline, you can just import OV config. OV config has all the details about uh, what is the size uh, and what, what is the technique that you are trying to use quantization array training. And this is a second import statement question answering OV trainer instead of the default trainer. And you initialize it and you uh, call the trainer. So um, the output of the training uh, would be an optimized int8 PyTorch model. Uh, using the optimi optimized int8 model, we can run the inference for better performance. So that's super great. Uh, Akila, I believe you've done some work to showcase how users can um, quantize hugging face models and run inferencing with the OpenVINO execution provider for Onyx Runtime through a low code workflow. Can you give us an overview of that workflow? Yes. Uh, so let me talk about AI workflow. AI workflow is an orchestration method that integrates data preparation, model training, model inference, model deployment, and automation to help developers and customers perform diverse and complex activities more efficiently. I would like to show you uh, what we have developed uh, using quantization array training and inference AI workflow. So we load the model from Hugging Face and we invoke the NNCF optimum uh, optimizations through Optimum Library. And then we get the uh, optimized intake model and then we validate the performance and uh, use it for Onyx runtime inference because we have it in the Onyx format. Cool. So I can see how this kind of is all coming together. This diagram is super helpful to see how we're able to leverage all these different open source products to get a good um, deployment uh, workflow and then you know, leverage the different um, hardware and open Vino in order to get the performance that we need. So that's really exciting. Um, and we have some cool features on Azure ML um, that supports these kind of workflows. Uh, do you have a demo that can kind of show us how this would work in Azure ML? Let me start with the training notebook as it takes a while to finish it, I'll walk you through the code. Uh, in this sample, we are demonstrating quantization away training uh, through Optimum Intel. Uh, for this demo purpose, we are using BERT model from Hugging Face Hub for question answering use case. Uh, let me start the training notebook as it takes uh, a while to finish it. 
uh, I will walk you through the code and structure of the, the notebook and how this particular workflow can be reused for other use cases. Uh, this is a quantization away training using Azure ML. Um, first, let me start it so that I can go through the code. Uh, as as you all know, the training takes lot takes up lots of resources and time. So I just want to start it. And these are the files that we have been using. So we have a GitHub repo uh, that we have posted the code on. So we're just getting those scripts. And these notebooks are hosted on Onyx Runtime uh, samples repo. And you initialize the workspace. Uh, you create a compute and attach the compute to your workspace. And I'm taking the script names that we have, uh, the which has the training pipeline and where we have made it, made those two lines of code change. And this is a Docker file. Uh, we are taking the OpenVINO base image, Docker image from Docker Hub, and we are installing the optimum libraries. And based on the Docker file, your environment is being created. Uh, which is like a Docker container. And then this is a, uh, these are the parameters that you provide for the uh, training to happen. Uh, because it's a training pipeline train script, you provide the model name and uh, you provide the sequence length, max train samples, max eval samples. For now, I'm just doing it for 10 samples uh, because I wanted to run it faster for the demo, but you can increase it for better accuracy. You can include whole whole samples and whole data set of the squad. This is a data set and that we are currently using. And this is how, uh, after you submit the job, uh, after you have configured everything, you submit the job uh, to the Azure ML. And this is the job and you can click on it uh, to view the logs. And uh, yeah, I think it, the, sub, the job has been submitted and uh, we are waiting for the training to happen. The output model will be generated in your workspace in output folder and BERT fine tune model. It would take about uh, five minutes to finish the task. Uh, and I have a model that, that's already generated. So let's go. Uh, the, let's. Uh, this is another notebook that I was talking about uh, with Azure ML, uh, where we are using, uh, where we are doing uh, inference using Onyx runtime uh, for BERT model. And we are using OpenVINO execution provider uh, as execution provider. And these are the scripts that we are using, BERT inference optimum ORT. So uh, similarly, uh, how we integrated uh, OpenVINO into optimum, Onyx runtime or, is also integrated into optimum library. So if we are using just one library, you can run it through Onyx runtime with OpenVINO execution provider. So these are the similar things that uh, we have gone through in the quantization away training where you attach a compute uh, and you set the path and you have uh, environment definition and you have the uh, same the same image that I'm uh, taking Docker Hub, uh, which is OpenVINO base image and I'm installing Optimum on its runtime library. And I'm creating an environment based off of the Docker file, which it will build the Docker uh, and the container is up and running, and then you, you can submit the job. So this is the inference script uh, where you can provide the model path and the provider, open an execution provider, and the input path, uh, the context, uh, because it's a question answering based use case, where you provide a context and you provide an input question and you get an uh, answer. Because this notebook is taking a, a long time, let me go back to the jobs which have been successfully completed so that we can uh, look at the inference output. So this is a job that I previously ran. Uh, and as you can see, the inference is being run on OpenVINO execution provider. And this is the question, and this is the answer. And the average inference time. So we have seen the eval metrics uh, at the end of the job completion. Um, we have uh, put together the comparison with respect to FP32 model and intake model accuracy for BERT large. So this is the F1 uh, score. Uh, F1 score is among the uh, score that is usually uh, the metric that is used for NLP models. It is known as a harmonic mean of precision and recall, which are based on false positive and false negative. Uh, F F1 score for FP32 original model is 93.1. And whereas a quantization away training intake model is 92.83. So from this, you can observe that uh, 
it's a very minor loss during quantization iv training there's not much accuracy loss is what i wanted to show they are able to keep almost all of the accuracy while getting those optimizations so that's really powerful yeah. uh, let me show the uh, fp32 original model and the int8 optimized model uh, so as you can see here, these are the uh, quantized, quantized linear and dequantized linear uh, on its own uh, that have been added for optimization purposes. These have been uh, visualized through Netron. Cool. I love how we were able to see the full process, like how we were able to use the quantization work training and then how we're able to leverage compute on Azure ML using all the cool tooling that OpenVINO has. Um, went over a lot, really, now that I'm going back through all of this and we're using Onyx Runtime to inference and get even more performance. Um, so definitely a lot of information. We'll make all of these links available for everyone so they can go and check out this code and try it out for themselves as well. Let's bring uh, Devang back. Cool. Well, thank you so much uh, for this amazing demo, for um, showing these really cool features that I'm sure people are really excited uh, to go check out. Is there anything else you'd like to uh, share? I just want to say thank you to you, Cassie, and uh, just for having us on the show. It was really, really awesome to have uh, to be on here and uh, showcase all these uh, uh, great stuff we've done, great collaboration yeah. and work we've yeah. done together on Open the Next Week Provider for Anachan. Yes, absolutely. Um, really cool, forward thinking things. Um, I love that it's built right into Optimum too. Like Optimum is such a cool thing. So it's like there's all of these um, really powerful tools coming together just to make developers' lives easier, really, when you think about it. Um, there is a blog post as well. Um, we'll share the link and uh, definitely check that out. Check out the source and let us know what you think. So thanks so much for hanging out. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.